Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I'm going to examine what would happen if we replace the first stage of the Saturn 1B rocket, which was a rocket meant to launch the Apollo Command and Service Module into low Earth orbit, not to the Moon, the Moon required a Saturn 5, but replace its first stage with a stage that was meant to replace it. And that was the AJ-260 solid rocket motor. Uh, the purpose of this was to make it cheaper. <laughs> and I don't have a good model of the AJ-260. I made this model myself rather quickly. It's part of the Schustrad engine pack, which is why it's called the SM-222. Uh, that's in reference to the amount of thrust it provides, incidentally. But um, yeah, it was a really big solid rocket motor. Uh, some people thought about using it for a shuttle program. Uh, it was a monolithic, I believe, uh, solid rock motor, so these joints aren't actually segment joints, they're just part of the casing. And so that means that it wouldn't have had the O-ring problem or, you know, because there are no joints between segments on this mo motor. And so maybe that would have been a good thing. But anyway, it was specifically 6.6 .6 meters in diameter in order to fit the Saturn 1B and replace its first stage because its first stage had eight H1 engines and that was very expensive. So if we have this here, we can see that this is just 600 tons and has these eight engines burning kerosene and oxygen. And this one brings it up to 1000 tons. And the question is, is there a benefit to that? It has a lot more thrust. Uh, this version uh, these engines, there are eight engines, and each of them provide about 1,000 kilonewtons. You can see right there, max thrust 1,000 kilonewtons. So that's 8,000 kilonewtons, basically. Now this one, it's, it's all on its own, 20,000 kilonewtons, or 20 meganewtons, or 22 in vacuum. So more than double the thrust. Of course, it's increased the mass, it's increased the, uh, it's decreased the efficiency. So that's a bit of a problem, but well, what is the benefit? Now, we could just look at MacJib to find out the delta V reading, but this is somewhat problematic for reasons I'll explain. First of all, let's make sure about our engines. The configuration I have this on right now is the one that flew on Skylab, so that's appropriate. And so hopefully, yeah, I mean, that makes sense because it would only get this upgrade by that time anyway, and that's what we're comparing things to. And I just want to make sure that we have the right fuel mixture and top it up. So I'm gonna fill it like that, and it seems about the same. And up here we have the J2 engine, that'll be consistent regardless of what the first stage has. And we are on the configuration that flew in later flights, and presumably by Skylab they were using that here as well. And we probably don't want this topped up. And let's see what the optimal is, maybe. Because... I mean, it's tough to say. I mean, you get more thrust weight ratio out of it, but then you get less delta V, and it's tough to figure out what the good balance of that is. One thing I do know is this rocket is not going to make orbit if it only has 9,183. So I am going to reduce even further how much I put into the service module. And that's fine because the service module was only topped up for moon missions where it had to also carry the lunar module into orbit around the moon. Uh, it would not be fully fueled for low Earth orbit missions. And this is probably more than enough delta V. It's not really showing the delta V right now. But yeah, so that gets us to a better number there. But just to show you, let's take this stage off, put this stage on, and we get about 200 extra. It seems unreasonable to only get 200 extra when we've added 400 tons. Not only that, uh, this has double the thrust, and more than double the thrust, and really with this much thrust, the surface thrust weight ratio should be 2, not 1.48. So there's something horribly wrong with the numbers in MechJeb. So that's why we can't just go look at MechJeb and go, okay, well, we can get this extra mass to orbit. We're going to judge how much mass we could get to orbit by how much is left in the S4B stage rather than trying to come up with an optimal payload. And I will use KOS to control the rocket for consistency's sake. So anyway, 
Uh, that being said, and this being our configuration for the first test, I need to see what the baseline rocket can do in 1.12, and then we will go ahead and toss on the SRB and see how it does. So here we go. But really, 200 meters per second doesn't seem like a whole lot extra, does it? Oh, okay. Well, I was doing shell stuff and this is a bit awkward, but I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. It's no milk, milk stool or anything, but it'll be fine. All right, run seven one B. Here it says the total delta V is 9,790, so I don't know. But maybe it's reading the service module properly now. It has a water warning because uh, we rely on the fuel cell to produce the water. Um, well, it doesn't read, you know, it's, it's not the service module apparently, not here anyway. Okay, well, who knows. Okay, we should be past max Q and we are looking good. First stage separation. And second stage ignition. I'm gonna try and separate the launch escape system now. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. I don't know why it has issues. But it has issues. I don't remember it having issues in earlier versions so it's very suspicious but anyway we got rid of it that's the important part I've tried that launch escape system with an action group you know activate engine and decouple at the same time and I've tried via staging and either way it just doesn't work properly for some reason okay we are in the final phase of the launch and we should make orbit here. Okay, 281 by 243 with 131 meters per second left. So that's our point of interest here. So... Yeah, things aren't working quite right around here. Um, can we get the command module free? Okay. I wanted to check how much delta V we have, but it's not reading it down there. I guess I'll have to ignite the engine. Oh, um, well, this this model doesn't have the helium built in, or this craft file, I should say. I'm sure the mod has the helium built in, but the craft file doesn't. Oh well. Anyway, I was just why wanting to check that we had you know, a good low Earth orbit delta V, but I'm sure we do. All right, so the important thing was 131 meters per second. So now we are going to put the SRB on and see how much it gets. You could also judge by the on orbit mass, which we can also see down there. How much extra mass do we get into orbit? I'm gonna call this Saturn 260. Okay, well, it's a little bit buried in there, but we need to adjust things. Here, too, uh, now we have a lot more Delta V showing up there. But the launch escape system worries me. Let's see if that does the same thing. It still says 1.48 here for the sea level thrust weight ratio, but I'm going to assume it's going to be 2. So in the Saturn 1B launch script, we are going to set this to 2, because that's what I'm expecting. So that's the first thrust weight ratio. And then the thrust weight ratio with the J2 stage is the same. That's nothing different. And the starting roll is what it is. Okay. Let's see what that does. And looking at the G-force, it's a little bit under two. Oh gosh, things have happened. Okay, I think it was expecting two separate staging events, which is not necessary. Of course, it's an SRB. It only has one. It doesn't light the engines first. Okay, the formatting is a little bit weird, but I think that's right now. Hopefully. Off 
off it goes. Do I think this is a good idea? Not really, especially if we don't get a whole lot more benefit than just 200 meters per second. Might need it to turn more vigorously. It tries to stay close to prograde when the dynamic pressure is high, which it gets pretty high pretty immediately with this thing. Uh, that might not be the best strategy. And off it goes. And the G2. We are definitely higher up at this point. And it tried to get rid of the launch escape system, but same problem, same result. I don't know. Alright, well we have a lot of delta V it seems like. It seems like we have much more than a 200 meter per second benefit right now. But we'll see how it shapes up once we get to orbit. And if it looks good, we'll uh, try and toss a better payload on top of it. When I say better, I mean just uh, see what the max payload is. It's uh, reading that we're way overshooting, which I don't, I don't, I'm not too sure I agree with. But, you know, that the initial part of the launch was a little bit steep, so... We do need that a little bit more horizontal and maybe be a little bit more lax on the dynamic pressure limit. Okay, and orbit. And it's about 300 meters per second extra, it looks like. We're at a total of 34 tons right now. Not exactly the benefit I was looking for from launching with 1,000 tons and a huge SRB and everything. But maybe we can optimize it a little bit. Let's see what the actual payload capacity is. Uh, so we've got 447 extra. And so I'll try to come up with a payload that takes all of the available del Delta V. I really wish the dialogues here showed the dry mass properly. Right now they all always show the dry mass as zero grams. It used to be in prior versions that it would show the dry mass of the tank and then of course knowing how much we ended up with in orbit would easily allow me to figure out the probable payload capacity. Right now I've got 26 tons here, which probably is overdoing it. Um, let's try 24. We see 9,112. I don't know what to think about that though. I mean, with a high initial thrust weight ratio, we should be able to get to orbit with less delta V. But then we've got this upper stage <laughs> uh, that has a very low thrust weight ratio that complicates matters. All right, I've also tried to improve upon the launch script a little bit, and we'll see if that helps. Okay, here we go. 24 tons. Obviously, I added gimbling to this, otherwise we'd be in big trouble. It does have predicted residuals. So we are somewhat hampered by that. It doesn't gimbal a whole lot though, so it does have to be careful. You can see we're using about half of our pitch authority there. But not too bad. Okay, thrust tail off for the SRB. And separation. Ignition. And the fairings will separate uh, 120 kilometers. Okay, separation of the fairings. Well, if we sum it up right now, we have 8,100. But, of course, it has to maintain some pitch because it's such a long duration upper stage. We've kept the duration consistent. Uh, if you think that the S uh, Saturn 1B had a little bit less duration in the upper stage, that's fine. I just filled it to the brim, uh, but as long as it's consistent, it'll give us consistent results. 
Uh, what looked uh, rosy before does not look so rosy now. We'll be hard pressed to get this into orbit. Well, I don't think it's possible anymore. The stated capacity for Saturn 1B is apparently 21 tons. We're trying to carry 24 here. Now, in Kerbal Space Program, I have not particularly been successful at getting 21 tons uh, to low Earth orbit with Saturn 1B. Maybe slightly less than that. And again, the residuals do not help. Though, this doesn't even indicate any residual stuff here. I wonder how it gets away with that. I don't know. Alright, wrapping it up here. And we're not gonna make it. Well, yeah, there's the APS system. But that doesn't even have enough thrust to convince the launch script that there's still an engine running. And the plumes are weird. Okay, okay. Uh, so, maybe 23 tons. I'm not gonna retest it. The issue here is that um, it doesn't seem that interesting to use the AJ-260 on this, is it? Uh, we're not getting a whole lot of benefit out of it. It's very perplexing. It's very perplexing. We're 1,000 tons on the pad. So with the AJ-260, we're getting maybe 2.3% of our launch mass into orbit, which is pretty bad, especially since we have a Hydrolox upper stage. So... But it, it doesn't feel right. I mean, we've got double the thrust. We've got nearly double the launch mass. And the engines, the AJ-260 ISP is not that much worse than the H1s. I mean, the H1s tops out about 302. The AJ-260 at in vacuum is 263 or something like that. It's not like a you know, factor of 50% or anything like that. So, is the residuals really bad? I mean, this really is clipping into everything, isn't it? What kind of colliders are going on here? That's a whole other question, isn't it? There's something weird about the colliders here. Um, hmm. Yeah, well, at least none of it's my mod, so. <laughs> I don't have to deal with it, that's a whole other issue. Maybe it's related though, maybe there's something about that that causes weird aerodynamic stuff? I, I don't know. Hmm, are we getting weird drag from something? Yeah, so this is a puzzle. I, I feel like this isn't quite right somehow, that we get so little out of it. But then again, in the VAB, when it shows us our delta V, it also shows very little benefit from it, right? It, it's weird. It just is weird, but that is what the VAB shows. But at least it would have been cheaper. There was that, right? They were mainly going for it would be cheaper. But I don't know. What would happen if we put AJ-260s on the space shuttle? Well, I think I'll have to test that separately. For now, this has been a somewhat lackluster result for using the AJ-260 on the Saturn 1B. But with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.